This is part 73 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the non-repeatable read concurrency problem with an example. So when does a non-repeatable read happen? Non-repeatable read happens when one transaction reads the same data twice and another transaction updates the data in between the first and second read of transaction one. Let's understand this with an example. Here, we have a table that keeps track of how many iPhones we have in stock. Notice there are two transactions, transaction one and transaction two. Transaction one starts first and it issues the first read. It reads items in stock as 10. And before transaction one issues the second read, it's actually doing some other work. At that point, transaction two starts and it updates items in stock as five. When transaction two completes, at that point, transaction one issues the second read and it reads items in stock as five. So if you look at these two reads, read one and read two, the transaction one has issued. Notice read one produced 10 and read two produced five. So we are not able to repeat the same read. That's why this problem is called as the non-repeatable read problem. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So here we have the table TBL inventory. At the moment, items in stock equals 10. So let's make this our transaction one. Let's begin the transaction. And all we want to do is select items in stock from TBL inventory table where ID equals one. So that's our first read. And then we want this transaction one to do some other work. And to simulate that, I'm going to make this wait for 10 seconds. So we want this transaction to wait for zero hours, zero minutes, and 10 seconds. And then we want to issue our second read. And then finally, we want to commit the transaction. So that's our transaction one. I have another instance of SQL Server Management Studio running. Let's make this our transaction two. And all we want to do here is update TBL inventory table, set items in stock equals five, where ID equals one. All right. Let's comment the select query. And notice at the moment items in stock equals 10. So let's execute our transaction one and let's execute our transaction two. Notice that transaction two completed immediately. Transaction one is still being executed because we made it deliberately to wait for when, uh, 10 seconds. And look at the reads. Read one produced 10 and read two produced five. So we are not able to repeat the read, hence the name non-repeatable read. So how can we solve this non-repeatable read problem? So if you look at this table right here, so we have the non-repeatable read problem here. Read uncommitted and read committed transaction isolation levels have that problem. Whereas repeatable read, snapshot, and serializable, these isolation levels does not have that problem. So to fix this, set the isolation level of transaction one to repeatable read or any other higher isolation level. So what this repeatable read going to do is, it is going to use some additional logs to ensure that whatever data this transaction one has read will not be updated or deleted by any other transaction. In our case, transaction two will not be able to delete or update that data. So that is going to fix our problem. The reason why we have that problem here is because you know, after transaction one has issued the first read, transaction two is able to update the same data to a different value. And then when transaction one issues the second read, you know, it gets a different value. If we can prevent transaction two from updating the data that transaction one has read, then we can solve this non-repeatable read problem. And that's what repeatable read isolation level is going to do. So to fix this, Let's go ahead and set transaction isolation level of transaction one to repeatable read. And let's update items in stock to 10. And now let's change it to five. And if we select the data from the table, 
look at that items in stock equals 10. Now let's execute our transaction 1 and let's execute our transaction 2. Look at that transaction 2 now is blocked because we have used the repeatable read isolation level so transaction 2 now is not able to update that data and when transaction 1 completes at that point transaction 2 is able to make any changes to that data. That's why this transaction 2 was blocked until transaction 1 is completed. And if you look at the reads here, notice both of them produces 10 and 10. In our next video, we'll discuss the phantom read concurrency problem. Thank you for listening and have a great day.